Hi, I'm Sharice Williams, tarot reader, spiritual, oh boy, <laughs> spiritual teacher, and paranormal investigator and researcher. Um, that was Norman, my little senior dog, trying to go up his steps to lay on the bed, but then he decided to lay on the floor. Anyway, this is your tarot reading, <laughs> your energy forecast for July 27th to August 2nd. All right, so... Uh, I have three different piles here. Before we get started, I'll share the decks that I'm using because I know people like to know. I'm going to be using the Wild Unknown Tarot. This is actually kind of a new deck to me. I know it's been around forever, um, and I haven't worked with it a ton, but felt called to use it this week, so we'll see how it does. Um, then we also have a deck that I used to love, and I haven't used it for a while, Miracles Now, Gabby Bernstein, and then Divine Animals Oracle. Um... All right, so there's three piles. So before we get started, we're going to go ahead and close our eyes and do three deep breaths together. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. And one more time, breathing in and out. All right, so a couple things before we get started. Already I've been getting some hits on kind of what the energy, overall energy for everybody is this week. And this energy this week feels pretty ungrounded. Um, last week we talked about how there are some like major energy shifts going on. Like there was some powerful energy last week. This week we might be finding ourselves um, physically feeling those energy shifts. Even if they were energy shifts, which they usually are for our highest good, maybe getting rid of things that are stagnant in our lives or things we no longer need, things that we've been holding on to, change leaves you feeling a little uprooted and a little, um, you know, out of sorts until you get used to that new energy frequency. And then just as is life, then something else changes and you got to get used to it again. Um, but yeah, this week feels very airy and flighty and um, ungrounded. So before we even dive into the cards, that's something I wanted to get out there. This week, really focus on grounding your energy. I feel like a broken record this year, 2020, because that's all I keep talking about is ground your energy, strengthen your aura, ground your energy, strengthen your aura. And it's because there's so much change going on on so many levels, macro and micro levels, um, that literally the whole world is feeling ungrounded and unstable right now. And if we look at the numerical uh, number for 2020, it's the number four, which is about stability and foundations. Um, so it makes sense that a lot of us are kind of dealing with rocky foundations and finding how to keep our foundations stable and secure. So make sure you're increasing your grounding and all of that. Um, I'm going to show you guys the cards, the three piles of cards here. You can choose whichever one you feel drawn to. Don't second guess yourself. Stick with the one you first felt drawn to. You might feel drawn to more than one pile, and that's okay. I also suggest sticking to the very end, or at least fast forwarding to the very end. Um, if you choose pile one, stick through it, because usually there are some like slight recurring themes through each pile. Um, so there might be just a message for the overall collective as well at the end. So before we get started, I do also want to mention I do tarot readings. I do um, limited availability for live video readings one-on-one, -on -one, and then I also do emailed tarot readings. And I have a new reading offer. It is uh, WTF 2020, and it is to specifically help you zero in on your personal energy shifts for 2020, uh, sort of like, why are you going through what you're going through this year, how you can work with that energy, and um, some proactive steps you can take. It's basically to kind of remove the like WTF is going on this year and to give you that stability and that groundedness. So all those links are in the description. Okay, enough chit-chatting. <laughs> all right, pile one, pile two, pile three. One, two, three. All right, let's get into it. Oh, I need to ground myself today. Today has been a day. I tried to do this video earlier. I was like, oh, I'm going to sit outside. And then all of a sudden, rain came flying in and then I had to come in. And now a storm is approaching yet again. It's been crazy. Um, <laughs> more proof that we all need to ground ourselves, myself included. I got to practice what I preach. All right, pile one. 
we have Leadership Elephant. Beautiful card here. Look at those eyes in the back. Ooh, those just stood out. Nice. All right, Leadership Elephant. I allow people to witness their behavior so I can help them move beyond it. Ooh, I'm already getting some messages with that one. <laughs> and then we have Wheel of Fortune. There you go. All right, so for you this week, who chose pile one? First, let's dive into this one. I allow people to witness their behavior so I can help them move beyond it. Something that really stood out when I first read this is you can help people without taking on the world, without taking on their problems. Um, sometimes the best way to help somebody is to take a step back. We don't always need to be active hands-on trying to help people and change people. Remember, it is not your responsibility to change anybody. They are responsible for themselves. The only person you can work on changing is yourself, and that is it. So don't be somebody who you know, constantly lets yourself get used and taken advantage of and walked all over because you're wanting to help somebody. Sometimes stepping back, like this is saying, is the best way to help them. Um, let them take care of themselves, witness their behavior. You know, you if you step in and you're constantly trying to be the savior um, because you think it helps, that can sometimes hurt the person more than if you just let them do it on their own. Um, so often if we are able to solve problems on our own, even if it's really difficult, once we do it, we feel victorious and we feel stronger and we have more self-esteem and more confidence. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, Okay, and then leadership elephant, kind of like I was just saying, the only person you can change is yourself. Be your own leader. Where in your life, this week especially, can you step up and um, take control of your own life? Rather than waiting for the wheel of fate to spin around and who knows what will happen, you're not some like bystander in life. Like You are the leader. You are the active player in your own life. Um, so while, yes, there are energies in motion um, and things going on that sometimes are out of our control, you also can step into that leadership role and turn that wheel of fate to fit your needs and to fit your narrative. Uh, so this week especially, really see where you, where are you letting just life happen to you and where can you take the reins and take control of your life. That, speaking on how I mentioned earlier, people this week are going to be finding themselves feeling very ungrounded and uprooted by taking control of your life and refusing to just be like, oh, just life happens to me. It is what it is. Well, yes, some things that is true. You have control of your life. Step into that power, into that personal power, and that will help you to feel super grounded and secure. When we live in that mentality of like, oh, just the wheel of fate is constantly spinning and I have no control. Um you don't feel grounded with that. You feel, you feel ungrounded. But when we take control and initiative in our own lives, like I was saying with this, it helps you feel secure because you are the one in control. Um, and as I'm saying that, though, I'm, I'm hearing to not, not hold too tight, not control too hard <laughs> is kind of what I'm hearing. So while yes, you can turn that wheel of fate to fit your personal narrative and to kind of mold the life that you want and work with the energies, work with the energies of fate and destiny to create the life you want. We also would like to keep it flowing. <laughs> um, this is reminding me of, I just did a client reading and the message coming through was, if we think of a river, a river is flowing, it's doing its thing, it's just going along with the flow, with the current, but it's also so powerful. I mean, rivers can literally like change the shape of boulders and shorelines and that's powerful. It's creating the path that it wants, but it's doing it without forcing it. It's just, you know, persisting along, persevering, just doing its thing, um, but it's still changing the path that it wants. So I hope that makes sense to kind of like have control, step into that leadership role of your personal life, while also kind of leaving room for some free-flowing energy. Um, all right, so that was pile one. Let's move on to pile two. We have Sacrifice Bull. Oh, I love these cards, you guys. These are so 
they're so, I mean, look at that down there. They're so freaking beautiful. All the, um, here it is again in case you want to see. Um, and the guidebook is really good too. But I mean, they're all just so beautiful with so many details. Sorry, this lighting is not the best. I need to get myself a ring light. I need to step my game up. Um, all right, so we have Sacrifice Bull. We also have, in order to awaken the world to the light, I must not be afraid to shine. Ooh. So there we go. And then we have Daughter of Cups. Okay. So those of you who chose Pile 2... All right, so this week you may be finding yourself feeling, um, you know, extra sensitive, like we already were kind of talking about. Some of you, um, you know, we all react differently to feeling ungrounded. Uh, some of us get, like, we feel ungrounded and it makes us scared, so then we get angry because that's an easier feeling to feel than fear. Um, some of us just get super overwhelmed and feel emotional. And those of you who chose... Oh, lighting, chose pile two, you will probably be finding yourself feeling more on the emotional side this week of everything, um, of feeling very sensitive and very like you don't want to rock the boat kind of thing. Um, let me take a drink real quick. Um, you're not going to want to rock the boat. However, it's okay to rock the boat sometimes. Like this says, in order to awaken the world to the light, I must not be afraid to shine. And sometimes when we shine our own light, it makes other people feel uneasy. Um, but that's okay, it's not your problem. It's not, we never wanna dim our lights to appease other people. And so I don't know those of you who chose pile two, if maybe that is your kind of go-to because you don't like the confrontation. So instead you dim your light, you shrink yourself in order to not disrupt the the energy or, uh, you know, disturb or upset somebody else, stop doing that. Now is the time to stop doing that. You need to sacrifice your personal, um, I don't want to say you need to sacrifice your personal comfort, but it's one of those things like it's okay to step outside of your comfort zone. It feels comfortable to be this little chick here just hanging out in your rainbow water and it's lovely and relaxing and you're not causing problems. Um, but you need to get out of that comfort zone. You need to sacrifice your own your own shelter, your own shell. If this is making sense, uh, I'm having a hard time putting into like what I'm hearing and receiving into words. Because um, it sounds mean to say like sacrifice your comfort for the benefit of others. Because that's not what I'm saying. Like we never want to like force things force ourselves to do things that we genuinely like are not in alignment with us. But we also don't want to get trapped in the the old narrative and the old story of like, oh, well, I can't do that because it makes me feel uncomfortable. You know, it's, um, it's, uh, there's a difference between making yourself do something that is going against your personal values and your personal energy versus kind of stepping out of the arena that is keeping you small, even though it makes you afraid and a little nervous, and doing something that at the end of the day is good for you and good for others. So basically what I'm saying this week for you who chose pile two is it's okay to rock the boat if it's for your highest good, which then if we're all living for our highest good and we're all living at our best potential, um, it encourages everybody else. It's like It's like a ripple. It's like when you throw a rock into um, a pond and all the little ripples come out. If you're that little rock and you throw yourself into that pond and rock those waves, you know, create those ripples like we see here, um, by you sacrificing your comfort maybe to step into your light that maybe you haven't shown before, you then are sending these beautiful energetic ripples out into the world to inspire others. And yeah, there may be some people that are like, I don't want these beautiful rainbow ripples on me. Like, get the hell out of here. But that's not your problem. They're just not ready yet to be at that frequency to shine their own personal light or to um, shine the lightness onto their shadows as well. But again, that's not your responsibility. So sacrifice your temporary comfort that is keeping you feeling small and step into your light. Um, 
but again, kind of, I, I keep feeling drawn towards that first pile to remind you it's not your responsibility to fix people. Step into your own personal power, um, shine your own light, and create those beautiful ripples out into the world. Um, yeah, because ultimately by playing small and being, you know, con so concerned with disrupting the energy, it's really not benefiting you and it's not benefiting others as well. So I hope that that made sense. That one was really hard to get like the, uh, the emotions and the feelings out into words. Makes me crazy sometimes how that happens. All right, and pile three. Oh, now it's raining. It's lovely. All right, we have Will Tiger. I mean, come on, the details. Oh, I need new lights. New lights. I'm not even using any lights. I'm sitting in front of a window. Um, all right, but we have Tiger Will. We have my positive energy leaves a powerful impression on the world. I also, can I just say, love how like each of the piles kind of um, add on to the original one. Like, I mean, we literally were just saying this. <laughs> my positive energy leaves a powerful impression on the world. I mean, come on. <laughs> shine those shine your light create those beautiful energy ripples and it leaves a beautiful impression powerful impression on the world um, okay so we have that and then we have the six of pentacles here so for you pile three I'm feeling more like you if you chose pile three how I just mentioned how some people when things feel uprooted and they feel ungrounded um that some people get very emotional and some people get more like angry. Um, and then some people are like, man, screw this. <laughs> and they take the reins and they go for it. And I'm feeling like if you chose pile three, uh, that is you. You're a little bit more of that fiery going after what you want kind of thing. You're not passively kind of like pile three was like, I don't know, you know, like fate is out of my hands. Those of you who chose pile three, I'm feeling more like you're like, hell no, I'm going to get it. I'm going to make the changes I want to make. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm not sitting passively by. You're taking the, uh, the, the like airy, ungrounded energy and you're like, I'm going to create something out of this that I need and that I think is going to be the best for myself and ultimately the world. Uh, and that's kind of what the Six of Pentacles is about as well, is about, um, it's sort of like giving and receiving. It's, um, yeah, it's, I'm hearing my guides are just like, yeah, <laughs> it's about giving and receiving. I mean, we need that balance. You give, you receive, you receive, you give. And by tapping into your personal will, your personal power, and going for it, going for the damn thing, and really like not sitting idly by, um, you're changing the world. By positively creating what it is that you want in your life, by positively making changes in your life, by taking the energy that has been around us and molding it into something awesome, whatever that is, maybe it's creating something, maybe it's just smiling at strangers, maybe it's, um, you know, I don't know why, redecorating your room, I don't know why that just popped into my head. Um, it's it's basically taking the, the chaotic energy and using it for something productive is, is what I'm getting. It's... Um, yeah, it's creating calm out of the chaos. It's creating, um, what am I trying to think? There's that saying, creating something out of chaos. So bad at sayings. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's giving and taking. And I, I really, now that's standing out, the smiling at strangers. Give a little, take a little. The more we give out positive energy like this, positive energy leaves a powerful impression on the world, uh, the more we give out good energy, the more good energy we receive. And I mean, I know it's difficult with so many of us currently wearing masks. It's hard to smile. But I mean, if you genuinely smile, you can see it in your eyes. So if you're genuinely, even if you're wearing a mask and you're genuinely smiling at people that you see out on the street, at the grocery store, whatever, you're leaving that beautiful impression on them. Not everybody's going to smile back at you and that's okay. But really, the more you can give the good energy, the more you will receive that good energy. And it's like I just said, or I already said with this, it's it's creating those ripples of positive energy. And that is so needed right now. Um, but kudos to you for taking the crazy energy and creating stability out of it, taking the energy that is going on 
and switching switching the the playbook. You know, there's so many powers at be right now that are just pumping fear into the collective and they are feeding off of that fear that literally fuels them and to counteract that fear we can counteract it with positivity and light and that's not to say that you're not acknowledging the darkness in the world because there is you're just not feeding it and instead you're choosing to provide 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 <laughs> marriage is what wings us um you i don't know where i just went because i went off on a princess bride tangent um <laughs> anyway Put out good into the world and you will receive good. Uh, but that is it. So make sure, you know, just to kind of recap, put it all together, all the piles together. Um, create the life you want to create. You're not just some bystander watching life happen to you. You can create the life you want. It's okay to acknowledge the darkness that is in the world, but don't feed the fear. Instead, put out that light. Put out that light. The light can shine onto the shadows so we can face them and deal with them um, and be there holding space for others dealing with their shadows. But put out that love, put out that light. It's okay to step out of things that might make you a little uncomfortable in order to raise your own vibration, which then ripples out and helps everybody else raise their vibrations as well. So, but again, it's not your responsibility to change people as well. So I hope that that resonated with you. I'd love to know in the comments which pile you picked and how that is applying to your life. And I'll talk to all of you guys later. Bye.